Society friends. Good to see y'all once again here. Hello, hello. So we started looking at how to evaluate graphs analytically. So let's go ahead and take a second here and pause the video and give you guys a chance to go ahead and um, solve each of these function values and limits, and then we'll come back and talk about it. All right, go for it. All right, let's see how you guys did. Again, remember, function values, we're looking for where there are actual solid dots. So at negative three, there are no solid dots. There's an open dot, but no solid dots. So that means that this is undefined at negative three. F of zero, we're looking for the solid dot, and that would be right here. So that means this is going to be three. F of two, we're looking for the solid dot. That'd be right there. That's negative one. F of five, looking for that solid dot. Again, right there, that's three. And X equals six. Well, we have a vertical asymptote, so we'd say it is undefined. All right, so now we look at the limit values. What does it go into and what does it go out of? So let's see if I can make that a little bit bigger here. Goes into this solid dot. It's got to go into the same solid dot it does, and that's at two. So that means the limit equals two. At zero, it goes into the open dot from the left. From the right, it goes into the solid dot. They go to two different values. We call that a jump discontinuity. So that means the limit does not exist. At two, the graph goes into the open dot from the left and from the right. So it's not the solid dot we want, we want that open dot, this equals one. At x equals five, it goes into three and from both the left and the right, so that means that equals three. And at six, notice it goes down to negative infinity from both the left and the right, it is unbounded, so we say the limit does not exist. All right, so just a real quick, just kind of remember how to do all this kind of stuff here. Now, on this graph above, now that we have all that, where are all the points of discontinuity? In other words, where does the, where does the function kind of break up? So let's see if we can't box up here. Right here at negative three, we had a, Actually, we should do this. Let's see if we can't come back here. And there we go. We know that's the next question. Let's see if we can't come back now and see if we can't take a look at that last part about where are the discontinuities at. So we have a point of discontinuity here. And we had a point of discontinuity here. So we had two different times where we had the function was discontinuous, but the limit, but the limit still existed. Okay. So we had two different times where it was discontinuous and the limit existed. So and that was when f of x is discontinuous, but the limit still exists. And that's at x equals negative three and at x equals two. And then if we keep going here and we're looking at this a little bit, notice we have a couple of points of discontinuity. Let's see, not the color I wanted. It's the color I want. Right here, where the limit didn't exist 
and it was discontinuous. Notice the limit didn't exist and it was discontinuous. f of x is discontinuous and the limit does not exist. So there are four different places that we had points of discontinuity. However, on two of those types of discontinuity, the limit existed. On the other two, the limit didn't exist. And this is going to be kind of important for us here. because we have different types of discontinuity. We have two different types of discontinuity. The first one is called a removable point of discontinuity. Now, take a look at where this happens. This exists when the function is undefined, but the limit exists. Or the limit exists and the function is a different value. In other words, a removable point of discontinuity that exists when we have a hole. It doesn't matter what's going on with the function value. So when we have a hole, when the graph goes in and out of the same value. So the limit exists but it's discontinuous. That's called a removable point of discontinuity. So in our previous example, these two right here, these were removable points of discontinuity because the limit existed, but the graph, the function itself was discontinuous. And the reason why we call it a removable point of discontinuity is we could write a piecewise that would, that would fill that discontinuity. Now, in the case where we have the solid dot already, so that case number two here, if I were to write a piecewise that would fill in this hole right here, if I were to write a piecewise to fill in that hole, this would no longer be a function because it wouldn't, pi wouldn't pass a vertical line test. However, we could still write some sort of relation that would fill in that hole. Now, the same can't be true for the removable points of discontinuity. So these are called non-removable points of discontinuity. We can't fill those in. And those are when you have a vertical asymptote, or we call it unbounded. It is unbounded. That really just means it's a vertical asymptote. Or if we had that thing that we talked about yesterday, which was the jump discontinuity. If we have jump discontinuity or, a, or it's unbounded, there's nothing we can do to fill in a hole. We say that these are non-removable points of discontinuity. So these right here, these are non-removable. So non-removable points of discontinuity are is when it is discontinuous and the limit doesn't exist. Non-removable point of discontinuity. So removable point of discontinuity, the limit exists, but the function is discontinuous. There's a break in it somewhere. Non-removable is when the limit doesn't exist and there's still that same break somewhere in it. Continuity. So notice, vertical asymptote, that's a non-removable point of discontinuity. Jump, it's a non-removable point of discontinuity. Biggest thing to remember is removable, limit still exists. And then on non-removable, the limit does not exist. In both cases though, in both cases, the function is already discontinuous. There's already some sort of a break, whether it be a hole, vertical asymptote, or some sort of jump. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a second here and try to talk about the
the types of discontinuity. Or we're going to discuss when the graph is continuous. So we're always going to assume the graph is continuous everywhere. So we say the graph is continuous, and then we try to figure out, well, except for when it is discontinuous. So in this case, I would have said f of x is continuous for all real numbers except when x equals negative 2 and x equals 3. And then I'm going to be specific about it. When x equals negative 2, what is that? f of x has a non-removable point of discontinuity because there is a jump discontinuity at x equals negative 2. What about at 3? What kind of con discontinuity is that? It's just a hole. The graph goes in and out of it. The limit exists there. So when x equals 3, f of x has a removable point of discontinuity because the limit exists at x equals 3 even though f of x is discontinuous at x equals 3. So as we get into these limits, notice it does require a little bit of writing because we want to be very specific about what we see going on there. So again, just to kind of help us clarify here, here's where the jump is. It goes it, on the left side, it goes into one value, but on the right side, it goes into a second value. It goes into two different values, so the limit didn't exist. Whereas on this one, on three, the graph from the left and in the right, they went to the same value, there, so the limit did exist. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you one more graph, and you guys are going to essentially kind of go through and do the same kind of idea. I'll leave up my example here of of the types of discontinuity so you kind of know how to write this. But I want you to take a second here and then we'll go ahead and call it a day after that. Explain when or what the points of discontinuity or what is the continuity for this problem. All right, go for it. All right, well, let's see how you guys did, shall we? Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and box up every point of discontinuity. There's a point of discontinuity. Here's a point of discontinuity. Got another one, and we have a, another one. So we got to know where those values are. This one's fairly easy to tell. That's at 7. Okay, this one is at, whoopsie, not quite what I want. This one is at 5. That's at 13. This one here is at 18. Okay. So let's go ahead and see if we can't write out this whole entire thing here. F of X is continuous for all real numbers except when x equals negative 7, x equals 5, x equals 13, and x equals 18. So we got four places where it's discontinuous. So then we're going to talk about what each type is. When x equals negative 7, f of x has a non-removable point of discontinuity Because there it is, because f of x is unbounded at x equals negative 7, and therefore the limit doesn't exist. 
when x equals 5, f of x has a non removable point of discontinuity because f of x has a jump discontinuity at x equals 5. And therefore, the limit does not exist. When x equals 13 and x equals 15, f of x has removable points of discontinuity because f of x, because the limit exists at both x equals 13 and x equals 18. Even though f of x is discontinuous at x equals 13 and x equals 18. I should have made that an 8 up here. I lied. Right there. I guess I technically should have done a little bit more of this one. There we go. So let's just kind of, again, go back and just take a little look at why these things are true here on this graph. So again, it's unbounded because the graph goes to negative infinity. So this one doesn't exist because the left and right parts of the function go to two different y values. And it does work here because notice the graph goes into the, to the hole from both the left and the right. It goes in and out to the same value. Same thing here, it goes in and out of the same value. All right, folks, so this was about discontinuity. The types of discontinuity, removable, non-removable. Removable points of discontinuity, the limit exists, but the function is still discontinuous. Non-removable points of discontinuity is when the limit doesn't exist, and the function is discontinuous. So um, you're gonna be talking about continuity a little bit on your homework tomorrow. So we'll talk a little bit more about this in class and I will see you then. Take care guys.